Well, hey there, it's me, Ripper the Clown, the unpredictable cartoon character come to life, and I'm here to discuss the 2018 WWE Hall of Fame. The worst Hall of Fame in history, hands down. You know, no matter what anyone says or any comparisons, this is the absolute worst WrestleMania card ever and the worst Hall of Fame roster ever. And I've said this before, but I've never said it so vehemently as I'm saying it now. If the WWE set out to design the worst WrestleMania card and the worst Hall of Fame roster in history, they couldn't have done so more perfectly. Here's a general 2018 Hall of Fame observation before we start. Where's the dead guy this year? I mean, come on, every year the WWE inducts a dead guy into the Hall of Fame. This year is the first year in eons where a dead guy hasn't been inducted. And I'm not talking about the legacy wing. I'm talking about the regular inductions. No dead guy this year. And this befuddles me. And it angers me too. Because there are a lot of guys who deserve to be recognized more than the roster that they've put forth this year. And you know, we all know this by now. Every year in the WWE Hall of Fame, there's always an iffy induction that makes hardcore wrestling fans raise an eyebrow. You know, an induction that just doesn't make sense because the inductee doesn't really seem Hall of Fame worthy. You know, you hear it on, you hear the announcement on TV and you wonder to yourself, what the F is the WWE thinking long after they got the F out? Well, this year, that iffy induction actually consists of six out of the seven of the entire 2018 Hall of Fame class. Now here's the 2018 Hall of Fame rundown. Keeping in mind as I run through the names of the regular Hall of Fame inductees that Lord Alfred Hayes, someone who is in my opinion just as important to 1980s and 1990s WWF as say Gorilla Monsoon, Bobby the Brain Heenan, and Jesse the Body Ventura, Lord Alfred, Alfred Hayes won't be getting the standard induction into the Hall of Fame, but he's been announced for the Legacy Wing, which means they won't be giving him, you know, the induction on TV or anything else. Lord Alfred Hayes could have been this year's dead guy, people. Better phrased, Lord Alfred Hayes should have been this year's dead guy, goddammit. And his contributions to the 1980s and 1990s WWF TV should have warranted such. So, Lord Alfred Hayes, whose phrase, promotional consideration, paid for by the following, was etched into every wrestling fan's mind for eternity, he won't be getting the standard induction that the rest of the 2018 Hall of Fame roster will receive which is just freaking pathetic. So here we go. Here are the list of the people more worthy of a regular standard Hall of Fame induction than the great Lord Alfred Hayes. First, we have Bill Goldberg. He's kind of the main event for the 2018 Hall of Fame. And for me, this is really the only good choice for the Hall of Fame this year. But I say this with the caveat that Bill Goldberg should have been inducted into the Hall of Fame last year, not this year. This would have made sense, people. Think about what the WWE could have done here. And I said this last year at this time, and I repeated it numerous times, and I even repeated it when they announced Bill Goldberg for this year's induction to the Hall of Fame. This all should have been done last year, and I'm going to tell you why. Weeks before Fastlane 2017, the WWE should have announced Bill Goldberg as a part of the 2017 Hall of Fame. Then at Fastlane, Goldberg wins the Universal title from the greaser Kevin Owens, and he becomes the first person to ever be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame the night before he defends a title at WrestleMania. It would have kicked the match with uh, Brock Lesnar up a notch, and it would also make for a new twist in the story that Lesnar was out to destroy the Hall of Famer on a special weekend. I mean, the media would have ate this shit up. And then so Goldberg, he goes forward, he gets inducted, and then the next night at WrestleMania, he loses the belt to Brock Lesnar, and he's even more sympathetic because he just got inducted to the Hall of Fame, and he just lost to the biggest bastard on the roster in the process. Now, this... Bill Goldberg induction scenario that should have happened in 2017 makes perfect sense. It would have made, been a moneymaker simply in the promotion of what it would mean to have a Hall of Famer defending a title at WrestleMania the night after he was inducted, no less. But did the WWE decide to do what made perfect logical sense? No, they didn't. And thereby, instead of inducting Bill Goldberg last year, when it could have actually meant something on so many levels and added to the build of his match with Brock Lesnar, instead, we have Bill Goldberg inducted this year, when it means absolutely nothing. And it's just another freaking induction. You know, they do the same thing every year. The WWE always inducts a tag team into the Hall of Fame. And this year's standard tag team induction is the Dudley Boys. So someone please explain to me 
why the Dudley Boys are going into the WWE Hall of Fame, yet there are tag teams like the Hollywood Blondes, Demolition, the Hart Foundation, the British Bulldogs, and the Midnight Express, either Beautiful Bobby Eaton and Dennis Condry or Beautiful Bobby Eaton and Sweet Stan Lane, that aren't in the Hall of Fame yet. It seems absolutely unfathomable that the Dudley Boys would be Hall of Fame bound before any of these aforementioned teams. And you know what? I mean, I know everyone just loves the Dudleys, but for me, they were just a cookie-cutter tag team with no real appeal, no real gimmick that I could ever determine what the hell they were doing, and basically the same cookie-cutter match over and over and over and over and over and over and, and over again, and the same cookie-cutter catchphrases over and over again. I mean, does anyone really want to hear Devon Dudley say, what's up anymore? I mean, that got stale about 20 freaking years ago. I never got or appreciated the Dudleys. I'm sorry. You know, a few seconds ago I mentioned how the Dudleys were a cookie cutter tag team, or so much about the WWE is cookie cutter anymore, as is the Hall of Fame. Because every year you know that you're going to get a dead guy, except this year when they just threw the dead guy out the freaking window. And every year you're going to get a tag team, I just mentioned the Dudleys, and you know every year you're going to get your standard female inductee. And this year's standard female inductee into the Hall of Fame is Ivory. Now, I'm sorry once again, but was I the only person who had to think for a second to even remember anything that Ivory did in the WWE? Hell, I had to think for a second about who Ivory even was. Not that I have a bad memory, because I actually have a superlative memory, but Ivory's contributions to wrestling were, at least in my memory, so insignificant that she faded from my wrestling conscience. When I saw the announcement online that Ivory was being inducted into the Hall of Fame, it took me a few seconds to think, Ivory? Oh yeah, Ivory. I seriously had not thought of Ivory in like 10 freaking years. And I mean, I'm sorry, I'm sure she's a nice person. But come on, once again I ask, how is Ivory Hall of Fame bound before Miss Elizabeth or China? Or even Molly Holly, who's inducting Ivory into the freaking Hall of Fame this year? Molly Holly would have been a million billion times better choice than Ivory. And again, I reiterate, Ivory will be getting the standard Hall of Fame induction, but Lord Alfred Hayes won't. And then we've got Jeff Jarrett, one of the most patently boring performers and overrated performers and personalities ever. And he's going into the 2018 Hall of Fame. Again, before guys who truly deserve that honor, like... William Regal, Brian Pillman, Bruiser Brody, and Art Barr. You know, I never understood Jeff Jarrett's appeal, and I never understood why back in the day the WWF and WCW fought so freaking hard to get the chosen one on their respective rosters. Because in my opinion, Jeff Jarrett never seemed to have the in-ring ability or the personality or the charisma worthy to move above the mid-card. Jeff Jarrett was a mid-carder at best to me. Jeff Jarrett's only entertaining moments were his tag team with Owen Hart. And then you've got to ask yourself, and this, this mention of the Owen Hart tag team brings up an amazing point. All politics aside, how the freaking hell is Jeff Jarrett in the WWE Hall of Fame, but Owen Hart isn't? That in and of itself is an absolute travesty. And it proves once again how the WWE Hall of Fame is one big freaking joke. And much like Kurt Angle's surprise return and induction last year, all of the standard predictable WWE cookie cutter style of doing things, I hear Jeff Jarrett is in line for a spot on TV. That'll be wonderful. Who will replace the soulless Daniel Bryan as SmackDown commissioner or whatever the hell role Daniel Bryan has. And we'll get to see Jeff Jarrett answering phone calls and talking on the phone to nobody. And then have people come in and interrupt him and talk to him. And then when they leave the room, he'll stare off introspectively like Bryan, Daniel Bryan and all the other freaking general managers do. Jesus Christ, it's going to be pathetic. It's going to be horrible. And the idea of having double J on television again is enough to make me cringe. And then we have Hillbilly Jim. You know, this guy has been with the WWE or WWF for like 30 freaking years. And he's always been a color, colorful character for the kids. You know, he wasn't the best in the ring by any means. But, you know, I won't say that I couldn't think of anyone better to induct than Hillbilly Jim. And I just listed a few. Owen Hart, Brian Pillman, Bruiser Brody, Art Barr, William Regal, to name a few. But at the same time, the pick of Hillbilly Jim going into the Hall of Fame didn't offend me as the others did. 
Again, Lord Alfred Hayes won't be getting an induction like Hillbilly Jim will. But, um, you know, it's not, it's not really, you know, a, a horrible thing how, having Hillbilly Jim in. I just think that they could have thought of, like, you know, a couple hundred people better. I mean, Hillbilly Jim, back in the day, did have a really cool LJN figure. So maybe that was a criteria to induct him into the Hall of Fame. I don't know. And then, for the celebrity wing of the Hall of Fame, we have Kid Rock. You know, for the most part, the Celebrity Hall of Fame is just a throwaway anyway. No one could give a shit. And I could care less about probably 99% of whoever goes into the quote-unquote celebrity wing, except for Mr. T. That was, I, I, I like Mr. T, and, you know, so, you know, I'm a mark for Mr. T. He's probably the only person who went into the celebrity wing that I actually really genuinely care about. But I have to say this. For the, a company like the WWE that now prides itself for its PG content, the WWE sure does honor a lot of celebrities such as Kid Rock and Snoop Dogg at all whose content is anything but PG. And I have to admit that this grand in-your-face hypocrisy really freaking confuses me. And then finally going into the 2018 Hall of Fame is Mark Henry. You know what? I agree. Mark Henry should be Hall of Fame bound at some point, but not right now. You know, let's face it, most people over the years have really hated Mark Henry. I've never heard anyone actually praise Mark Henry for having a good match. People have always shat on his gimmicks, which, you know, most of them deserve to be shat on. But they've also shat on his in-ring talent and in-ring ability. And you know what? I've always believed that he was kind of talented and fun to watch in the ring. I mean, he wasn't the best. He was never going to have a five-star match, but the guy was still entertaining. And yeah, some of Mark Henry's gimmicks were stupid. And yeah, some of Mark Henry's gimmicks were kind of disgustingly weird, but regardless, with his background and his lengthy history with the company, hell yeah, he deserves a spot in the Hall of Fame. You know, not now. Maybe, you know, 5 or 10 or 15 years from now. And in closing, here are some final remarks. In theory, the 2019 Hall of Fame can't be any worse than this year, but I can hardly wait to see what shitty roster the WWE comes up with to induct next year. And hey, I may be repeating myself to some degree or another, but is the WWE so at a loss for quality inductees, notwithstanding all the obvious exclusions, to the point where they even considered, let alone inducted, Ivory and Jeff Jarrett into the Hall of Fame? And hey, you guys remember when the Hall of Fame really seemed to be honoring the guys who deserve to be honored? I mean, look at the classes. Look at the Hall of Fame classes from like 5, 6, 10 years ago. I mean, that was like stacked from top to bottom with quality names. Remember when the Hall of Fame was kind of special and when it kind of meant something? But now it means squat. There seems to be no solid criteria, criteria or anything regarding who they throw into the Hall of Fame. And at this rate, within 10 years, Van Van Horn and James Ellsworth will be in the Hall of Fame. And fans will eat this shit up for no reason other than because the WWE fed it to them. And hey, at that 10-year point when they've inducted Van Van Horn and James Ellsworth, I'm pretty sure we'll still be waiting for Owen Hart, Brian Pillman, and William Regal to be inducted. You know, the same people booking the Hall of Fame are also in charge of the WWE's content. And when you think about it that way, yeah, this shit show all kind of makes sense. The Hall of Fame is just a silly TV show and a grandiose presentation that seems to be a senseless, corporate, and politically driven machine more than anything else at this point. I'm Ripper the Clown.